It's time for more double size benchies because I've got an update on Ender 3 TL smoothers. I very recently released a video testing TL smoothers on my Ender 3. In that video, I set up a nice back to back comparison with stock versus having a TL smoother on the extruder. Now in that video I stopped short because the extruder made no difference and that's because in a previous video on my Cocoon Create Touch which says very similar electronics being 24 volts and having A4988 stepper motor drivers only extruder TL smoother made a difference X and Y did absolutely nothing. I made an assumption and you know what they say about that. Immediately after releasing the video I had commenters telling me that I should have tested on Axis X and Y. I must commend them for how polite and constructive they were. Normally in YouTube, comments are just not that nice, so I really appreciate it. Several people commented that Nexitech, when he tested the Ender 3, added TL smoothers to X and Y, and he had great results. Another gentleman by the name of Grant Peck posted up that he had added a single TL smoother to the extruder, and that had got rid of the banding, and that his results were completely different to mine. Now I'm happy to admit my mistake and offer my apology for not testing as rigorously as I should have in the previous video. All I can say is that I at least advise people not to spend any money, so nobody should have wasted anything there. There's only one thing to do, and that was to test with TL smoothers on axis X and Y. So I jumped straight into it. I started off the seven hour print before I left to work, hoping it would be ready for me when I got home. But when I got home, I realized I had made a stupid, stupid error, and then I plugged in a fan instead of the end of three into the PowerPoint. Anyway, here's take two. Let me show you the results. Here is the original print without any smoothers side by side with smoothers on the extruder X and Y. Something has definitely happened. I wouldn't say it's gone. I'm not even sure if I would call it better. At this point I was ready to stop, but I thought I shouldn't make the same mistake again. It would be diligent to add another one to the Z axis. So I had one on each and I ran that print with the same G code, same filament one more time. Once again, here it is compared to the other ones, and I would note that adding a smoother on Z seems to have had no appreciable difference compared to adding it on E, X, and Y. Again, the result was different, but not necessarily better. The banding was still there, but it almost looked like it was a little bit melted. Conclusion, well, I don't really know what to think. My results are different to other people running the exact same mod, so I'm kind of scratching my head trying to work out what's happened. A couple of possibilities. There's a couple of different versions of the boards. I'm running a 1.13. I can't quite see in Nexitech's video what version he's running. I've updated my firmware to the unified Marlin firmware from TH3D, and Grant Peck said in his post, and I agree with him, that he's running the standard firmware, but it should have no difference at all. I suppose it is possible to have some variance in the different TL smoothers out there, but apart from the mounted diodes, they're a very simple device, and the potential for change shouldn't really be there at all. All I can really conclude is that the results are inconsistent. The good news is that TL smoothers are exceedingly cheap. We're talking $5 each when you buy three for 15, as in the Amazon link below. If you take a punt and you lose $15, it's not the end of the world. But of course, if you're happy with the current prints, then just don't worry about it at all. On a side note, I can see from my testing that it is possible to fit all four TL smoothers inside the standard case. Just make sure you push them to the side and you cover the contacts on the underside to prevent any chance of sparks. The best way to do that is to put on some thick cloth tape underneath, or even better, get some heat shrink, cut it to size, and slide it over the top. That's gonna wrap it up for this video, and I'm sorry I couldn't be more conclusive. At least I can go better in the next video because the stepper dampers have arrived, and I'll be doing a similar back-to-back -back test to see if they have a good reduction in vibration and if they affect the print quality. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then. Happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.